Shalom uvracha, my dear, dear friend, Alan Dali. Shalom you know aleichem. How many times I use your name? Yeah, I use your name all the time because you're always, you're always busy at the synagogue. You're always running around. You're always doing something, Baruch Hashem. Well, I'm listening to your beautiful voice, Baruch Hashem. I really enjoy your voice and I see the reaction on people's faces. Baruch Hashem. I, you should because... You should see people's faces because you're always in the synagogue. You're walking around. They call you what? The candy man? The alcohol man? What is it? <laughs> no, the candy. The candy. Alcohol, I gave it to somebody else. I filled in That's for right. COVID a couple of times, but uh, the alcohol people will come very soon. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Listen, Alan, first of all, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to be on uh, the Up Close and Personal with myself. And um, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you a, a question that's a little bit general, but at the same time, specific. Meaning, if somebody, which is probably rare, but if somebody wanted to know Alan Dali, what would you say about yourself? Like, let's say where you come from, how long have you been in Montreal, and, uh, you know, your background a little, little bit. I was born in Baghdad, Iraq. And I left six years after the Six Days War. Six years after. Wow. And yeah. we came to Montreal. And since then, since 1972, I have been basically, till today, I took 12 years reprieve in Brazil. And I came back, married, have three kids, Baruch Hashem and uh, yeah. wife Baruch Hashem, but the biggest Baruch Hashem is <laughs> the synagogue that unites us and the people that are working for it because they are dedicated. Baruch Hashem. Beautiful, beautiful. Amen, amen. And you're a, you're, a, you're a very optimistic man. I know that every time we speak with you, you're always praising Hashem for everything that you have and you're, you're thanking God, which is something that many of us need to learn. That, uh, you know, you take things the way they come and you have to thank Hashem for everything you have. You have a beautiful wife, with beautiful children. Your wife is very involved in the synagogue uh, and maybe under the roof of the synagogue. Explain how. The daycare of uh, this, I will leave to my wife. This is very complicated. You will leave to your wife. <laughs> yes, but you talk. You said about Baruch Hashem. We go to the but dollar. But I know she has a beautiful. Yes. Have to interview her. Need yes, to interview eh? her. <laughs> but for I am the, going to interview her. Actually, yeah. For the for the Baruch Hashem that you said, we go to the dollar yeah. store. We buy something for a dollar. They give it to us, they take a dollar plus tax. And we say thank you before leaving. Hashem is giving yes. us life every day, giving us health. We can walk, we can talk. These are, and we're not gonna say Baruch Hashem. We have to say Baruch Hashem from the morning till the night. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I have to tell you something. You and I go a long way, even though we haven't seen each other for like 25 or 30 years almost. Yes. When I was here at the synagogue as a young boy, you were so, I remember you were still with that feisty and running around and always loud voice singing to Hashem. I always appreciated that. And you're a very important part of the liturgy because you sing a lot. You participate in, in, uh, in the service uh, actively by singing, by giving candies to the, the, young, to the people, young and not so young. Um, what made you so close to the synagogue? What's, what's the attraction to you? This is a, a social center, the synagogue. It's not anymore only a synagogue. It's the so backgammon games. You're breaking up yeah i'm sorry can, can you say it again because i think we broke up a little bit sorry it's the back backgammon yeah. games 
it's the uh, older people playing and dancing. Yes. I see my mother and friends' mothers go there and enjoy, and parents. I see that uh, there is uh, poor in parties, and I see how the kids are enjoying it. I see that the community at large, it's a social club. It is a place Absolutely. where they get us together. We see each other. Mm -hmm. If they mm -hmm. come on Shabbat and pray or don't pray, still, they have a chance to eat and chat after the synagogue. Mm -hmm. And I hope they don't chat during service, like sometimes <laughs> I do, and many people do. But it is really, it's a, it it's a okay. gift thanks to okay. Hashem and to, 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 <laughs> to connect us, to connect us to our, to our roots and uh, our origins. And that's very important to give example to our kids. Beautiful, beautiful. And I think that's the segue to my next question. When you said that's the, you know, the, the teachings that you want to give to your kids so that they can also come to the synagogue, do you think that the synagogues are doing enough for, for to bring young people back to the cell? It's a very difficult, um, you know, challenge. But uh, do you think we're going to do it? Do you think we're going to overcome it? I think it has been, yes, it has been very challenging. But yeah. if we keep on moving fast enough, yeah. we should find a way how to break through. It has Beautiful. to be, it, we have to break through. I mean, there's millions and one suggestions. We have followed probably tens of thousands of them, but we have not really reached to break through. We need the young people That's right. to be the attracted. The full potential and the Exactly. And I agree with you. Now we're challenged also with another thing. The high holy days are coming up. As you know, like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it's going to be very challenging because less people have, can, uh, can come to the synagogue. It's going to be a Yom Hashanah, Yom Kippur that's going to be like no other. Um, you know, in, in, uh, in preparation for that, um, you have also been very instrumental in uh, talking to people and, and uh, giving ideas to the board and to the executive and to the ritual, the religious committee on how to approach uh, this situation. How do you feel, um, do you feel that we've tried all the different ways of getting people into the synagogue, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, but we still have to take care of their health? Um, is there anything else you think we should do um, to make sure that our congregants feel this rapprochement, this attachment to our synagogue. I, you know, I think that one of the things you're going to blow the shofar outside for people who cannot come in um, and visiting the people and giving them honey and, and apples and to make sure that they know that we're connected. Um, is there anything else you think we should do for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, especially during the services? Absolutely. We should... This is on my mind, and I was going to write a letter within the next two hours, and somehow yes, you're please. asking me about it. So people in general, as I found out from gatherings from yesterday, from also last week, uh, gathering my sister went to, my mother went to, people do not know what is the depth of work we have gone through to make the synagogue open for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. They have no idea. And they, because of the mm. uh, lack of facts, people are even refusing the idea to go. But after I explained to them in details what the synagogue is doing to keep them safe, they changed their mind. This has oh, wow. happened already twice in so the last four days. you think we should days. communicate that we should uh -huh. make a, a, a Zoom session and we should explain. There is, a, there is five congregations. Each one of the congregation will have its own entrance and exit, number one. Yes. Each one of the congregation Absolutely. will have its own specific bathroom. And it's going to be unisex yes. bathrooms. And then... Each congregation will have a guard at the door of the entrance to check the ticket 
and to make order and to disinfect. The second is an usher that's gonna seat them in a specific chair that is isolated from all the others. Everybody will, yes. have, will have a mask. The Hazanim will have a mask. The rabbis will have a mask. The usher will have a mask. Everybody will be, it will be clusters of chairs. If the father wanna sit with his two sons, that's fine. If he wants to yeah. sit alone, there will be a distance of two meters. And whoever wanna sit with someone, he let us know his chair is written to his name. And so is the ladies and everything and the services will be half done, not half done. It will be resumed into yeah. a short, a brief, pleasurable two hours and a half or so. And when they leave and the second turn comes in, all the chairs will first be disinfected. The books will be disinfected, the railings, the doors, everything. The bathrooms will be divided. There will be a guard at each bathroom door so that there will be no crowding inside. If it has one stall, it is one person at a time. One person at a time. Has, if it has a, four stalls, will be two people at the time. Exactly. This is Separate. how it is going to be done. They do not know this. We have to have a 10 minutes, 10 minutes a session to explain in English, in French. We have to advertise this 10 minutes for as many people that can attend. And we need to say it in both languages so everybody will understand. Maybe... I think it's amazing that you're, I think it's amazing that you're telling us that because, uh, Alan, uh, it's a very, very, very important information. And I think today, even by mentioning it now at your up close and personal, I'm sure people are going to hear about it and uh, agree to come back to the synagogue and not be afraid because we're taking so many precautions, right? So Absolutely. I fully agree. Yeah, I fully agree with what you said. I fully agree. And I think we should, uh, we should do that. Are you going to approach the, uh, the, uh, the board or the executive with that? Yes. Yes. I will write a letter and I will tell them that uh, I spoke to you today on the yeah. interview. And they should take uh, measures right away. And I hope you speak to them the same. Press for right away. Absolutely. And I will, I will, I will make sure that, uh, that I, I reinforce it. And I think it's a wonderful, wonderful. I, I know that our executive and board have been working tirelessly to make sure that everything is okay. But now people have to know. People have to know that we are working very hard for them and that we're making all the, all the necessary things. Um, Alan... When I think of someone who's dedicated, um, many people come to mind, but you definitely come on the top of the line somewhere because I know that when the times are difficult and the times are hard and the times are great, you're always there. And I think that's a very bi big lesson that you stick around. You have to be there. Continue reinforcing what the synagogue means to use for your children and for, uh, and for future generations. I think I can give it to you now. I can tell you in public, kol hakavod, chazak ubaru, for all, you, all, all that you do for your synagogue and for your, and for your community. I applaud you and I am very, I'm very happy to be in the same synagogue as you after all these years. I'm honored to have the opportunity to help the synagogue, and we are all honored to have you as our cantor, cantor Ben Lulu and Rabbi Pinto. We are blessed. We are blessed with both of you to have you at the synagogue. You guys are the biggest asset that we have. God bless you. We enjoy your voice so much and your wisdom that Dvar Torahs, that Rabbi Pinto gives us and his wisdom. Well, thank you so much. You are amazing. And I want to tell, please tell your wife that I'm going to interview her soon. So let her get ready. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. She's at the synagogue right now working, even if it's Labor Day. Alan, it was an honor to speak with. We are going to come to the synagogue and see you. Right? Amen. Amen.
Okay. All the best. Um, thank you, my friend. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Shalom.